Welcome to the Soulful Leader Podcast. This is Marin, and I'm here with Stephanie, and we're doing things differently today. Once a year, actually for 12 days, <laughs> we presence the coming year. So the next year that's coming, and we co-create with spirit and with life our next year. So we're really literally presencing the future. Mm-hmm. And it's a skill that we've been building. It's something that our our mystical teachers, our, our spiritual teachers have taught us. And it's a skill that we've been developing for years. We started sharing that practice. And today's podcast is a snippet of our review of Stephanie's life, essentially. <laughs> So uh, Stephanie, did you want to say anything about that? Because we we basically yeah. we took apart your September and October. We did. And- we shared we shared my vulnerabilities. And um, <laughs> what's what's really what I love about this is that every year, as a business owner, or even in my own personal life, I'll use like January first, and you know, as an opportunity to then presence or not even presence in my old life. I would have said, okay, what are my goals for the next year? What's my new year's resolution? And for the last few years, we've actually kind of flipped the script on that. Instead of trying to figure out and force things to want to happen, we're practicing a practice and a process of how do we let go and let come what's meant so that we are prepared internally to show up rather than, you know, when we think of preparing ourselves, you know, I think of a squirrel going around gathering its nuts all the time, right? Like we kind of hoard, we hoard stuff. And it's not about hoarding stuff, but it's preparing from a place of mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, Mm -hmm. which makes the physical preparation gentle rather than feeling like you're not enough or there isn't enough. And it's like we get in our heads instead of dropping into our hearts. So this is a practice that we do every year and we'd love to you know, to share this with you. So today's podcast, I, you know, Marin and I decided we would share what we, what we share in our monthly uh, unfolding with the 12 days of creation groups that we have. And just as a way of really sharing of what can be possible. And imagine if you were in an opera, a new operating system, not one of trying to figuring and forcing, but one of allowing and letting come and that you were radically prepared internally so that you could you could own it and you didn't feel like an imposter and it would be more playful and joyful. Mm. That's, that's what we are offering. And so we thought we would share it with you all as a podcast today. So as you're listening, what you will hear is there is, there are 12 days from December 26th to January 5th that we literally presence the 12 months of the coming year. So we're looking at day nine and day 10 of those 12 days as they related to September and October, which we're just finishing up to October right now. So enjoy the podcast. Certainly make sure that you check the show notes because all the links and everything will be in the show notes at the end. And if you have any questions, which they may came up because this is really different. This is not, this is, you know, two paths in a, in a forest diverge. And we took the one less, less traveled. This is definitely the road less traveled. So if you have questions that come up, you can email us or you can find us on our Facebook or LinkedIn page, the soulful leaders. Enjoy the podcast. In a world where achievements and accolades motivate us to do more and be more, we're often left wondering, is this really it? Deep inside, you know there is more to life. You're ready to leave behind the old push your way through and claim the deeper life that's calling you. That's where we excel. We're your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. And this is the Soulful Leader Podcast. Sit back and relax as we share the shortcuts we've uncovered to help you make shift happen.
Welcome to the Great Uplift 12 Days of Christmas. And we are actually going to be doing September and October at the same time. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing. My book disappeared. <laughs> so I have no notes for myself right now. And so it was meant to be because. And it disappeared just in the last week. Yeah. Like it it wasn't like disappeared for a long time. Right. No, I started a new journal and I always put my journals in the same place anyway. Um, but what was very exciting about that is Stephanie has got some really rich stuff from the last couple of months. So we're going to do a little interview. Stephanie, <laughs> <laughs> me, I get to interview Stephanie. Isn't that <laughs> exciting? <laughs> So the first thing that before we got on, Stephanie and I were talking about is her process, which is a little bit different than my process. And you've heard a little bit about mine over the, the this past year. So Stephanie, what is when you did this past year? I know it, it's different each year. This mm -hmm. past year, especially for the months of September and October, what was your process that you went through? Well, first thing in the morning when I would get up, I would literally just sit in presence and just breathe. And then I would draw a little mandala. If you don't know what a mandala is, it's like, think of a little circle and then you are creative within it. It's just whatever comes. So it, you might be inside the mandala. It might be outside the circle. It might, you know, but I, with my intention of, I am, I'm presencing what is going to happen that, that month of the next year. And so I draw a little picture and then I randomly, and I mean randomly, I'm not trying to look for a quote or anything like this. I might, you know, reach for a book or something that pops up, even if it's on like even Facebook or something, something that literally speaks to me. And I write down that quote. So I, I create the mandala, I find a quote. So for September, it's this basically two hearts. One, one is upside down and one is right side up. And there is a butterfly in the middle, almost mm. like it's a cocoon, right? And the butterfly is ready to come out, but it's still within the cocoon. And my poem is from Rabia, who was a great Sufi mystic. And it says, I look everywhere for your love. Then suddenly I'm filled with it. Mm. And so for the month of September, and I love September because September is my birthday month. So I usually really enjoy September because it's a time that I allow myself to receive. And it, because it's coming into fall, it's a time of harvest. So I like to like really reflect on the gathering. So back in when I was writing, this was with day nine in, uh, in the, the 12 days of Christmas or the 12 days of creation. Oh yes. And I also pick a word for the day, which I pick it, this word was for September was forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And September, um, for some of you who may not know, I was engaged and in September of last year, my engagement ended and the, my partner at the time decided he was going to go back in to his old life. And he actually left me on my birthday, essentially at the end of September. And I was just so heartbroken and I was really looking inside myself and realizing like how attached I was to the outer identity of oh I'm engaged oh I'm loved and it's so interesting that I had picked that quote I said I look everywhere for your love and then suddenly I'm filled with it right so it and goes so, from the outer to the to inner the inner version. yeah and so for this month when I'm looking at that I've just I've really been looking at my rhythm in my life this is something I've had a conversation with many people lately it's like when we think of yin and we think of yang, yin is like rain coming from the top, going down and being absorbed. Yang is from the bottom up. So it's rising up. So think of fire. It's, it's coming up and it goes up to the top of the head. We have daily rhythms. We have monthly rhythms. We have yearly rhythms. We have lifetime rhythms. And often we are out of rhythm. So when I'm seeing September, September is actually a time when we are meant to be going into yin, meaning we're going inward, going inward, going inward. And yet, at least where I live, 
September is kind of getting back to school, getting back to university, getting back to work, coming back from the beach. You know, it's hustle and bustle, organized. It's also a little bit of harvesting, but it's so dang busy. So I, this, this September, I, I refused not to be so busy. And I practiced letting go and really listening. I'm just letting things unfold. And what's so interesting when I go back and I read what I wrote <laughs> on day nine, I'm having a very hard time letting go of my, my, my identity and my past. Right. So when you say this, like you're looking at the day nine and yes. at the end, so at the, you say at the beginning of the day, you, you presence like a word, you draw a mandala and you pull a quote at the end of the day, end of the day, I write you down, write some happened. notes for yourself of what you you know, kind of what you noticed throughout the day. Exactly. So when I read my journal on this day of day nine, it was having a hard time slowing down and letting go. Mm. And here I am in September, the real September, and was so aware of wanting to slow down and letting go and recognize how hard it was not because it's hard, hard. It's because it's a, it's a habit hard. Mm. And so learning how to rewire myself to say, it's okay, it's safe, you can let go, you can let unfold, it, there is nothing you have to figure out or force or do. And I just realized, yeah. It's kind of like the butterfly, the the mandala that you drew, the butterfly in the cocoon. Yeah, it's ready. Yeah. But it's not ready. Right. It's, like, it's still percolating. It's still percolating. It might have formed everything, but it's still in the chrysalis and that's okay. Instead of making like, you know, because often I think, oh, it's not okay. I need to get X, Y, Z done or whatever. Right. Then when I turn the page and I go to October. So what happened this month in October for me is my back went out. Mm -hmm. And I've been in, in, and there's no logical reason. So often I'll say this with my clients, you know, did you hurt yourself? Were you lifting something heavy? You know, I always get asked that, right? like, what, what did you do? Right. What did you do? Exactly. What did you do that caused your back? I'm like, I didn't freaking do anything. I had the most amazing day. This happened like a, like a week ago or more. I had the most amazing two days of literally just being, I let myself meditate. I journaled. I had a nice long, hot bath. I did yoga. Like I literally nurtured and loved myself. I woke up at 2 AM in the morning and I could not get out of bed because my back was in such pain. I'm like, I didn't do anything like I mean I loved myself I nurtured myself what the heck is this back doing right right so one of the things that um both Marin and I study with Daniel Goodenough who's a wonderful teacher with the he person project and the caravan of remembering and we've been working with him and over this month one of his his questions to us were saying you know what if you woke up kind of like an alien. What if you woke up in the body of yourself right now and looked out through our eyes, used our senses and our awareness, and it was the first time you ever were incarnated in this body. You didn't have a backstory. How would you then, you know, unfold right. your, your day? So you didn't and know the history of this person. You didn't you know the history were... of this person, nothing. So I have been presencing that. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Obviously my backstory doesn't want to let go of me because mm. it's like got me flat out on my back. Right. I'm using all these words back, right? And the I say spasms this spasms like, going right. on. Like you will stay here. <laughs> you will, you will, you will, right? And so as I'm looking through my October, I'm looking at my mandala that I, it's like an inward spiral all the way to the center, which is a heart. And then the sunshine, which is the radiance of light that's coming out from within. And one of the things that I was present to that day of day 10 was the goddess Venus. And how what her, her attributes are is Venus dispels troubles and turmoil, hmm. gifting devotees, happiness, and joy. And I'm like, well, isn't that interesting? Because I, I could feel the dichotomy of both the trouble and the turmoil of letting go and just being, and also feeling, you know, I have a great amount of gratitude and, and love for my life, but why am I unhappy? Kind of like, gosh, I'm so grateful, but why do I still feel like crap, right? 
And I'm like, well, isn't this interesting? She's gifting the devotees happiness and joy. I'm like, okay, I'd like to have some of that. Mm-hmm. You know, she heals um, issues on the mental and physical level. Mm. She is the morning and evening star. And she's the daughter of the sea. She's the Roman goddess of love. And I'm like, well, I like that. Because October is really the, the final completion of the engagement. It's like, it's one year. I gave myself one year of not trying to distract myself from, from feeling. I literally said, you know, cause it's really easy. Like when you have a heartbreak or something's not working, it's really easy to distract yourself so that we don't really feel it. Right. It's and that just, just move on, just, just move on, on, carry on. My life right. is great. I'm going to focus on what's good. Da, da, da. And I actually gave myself a whole year of saying, I'm not going to fill up my schedule with things so that I don't have to feel I'm actually going to stay present to feel what so I can heal it so that I can learn from it and not keep repeating these patterns <laughs> so I then pulled a quote from Shelley the 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 poet Shelley and Shelley says but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strong I'm like oh that's interesting my word for the day 10 was be loved or beloved. It's the same word, right? Be loved or beloved, divine. And I wrote myself this question back in January. If I loved myself, I would dot, 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 dot. And I wrote, let go, let God, and know that everything is happening for me and for my highest good. Feel relaxed, think hopeful and positive, be loving towards myself and others. Say no to anything and everything that is not for my highest well-being. Set my new set new standards higher. And boundaries will then be communicated. Tell the truth to myself and articulate it to someone else with self-love, respect, and confidence. And then I wrote, it's not that I need to, I won't do this life without spirit. That spirit really is my beloved. Hmm. That is is the inner marriage inside a loving and a loving God, like a loving universe. And that to build my marriage within, with the divine, so I can change my DNA for my future. This is what I wrote down. And it's so interesting because I think of my back, the back pain. And I'm like, maybe it was actually holding me back. Yeah. Not from a bad thing, but oh. it could be like from a good thing of just be still, let go, let God breathe. What do you need to do? You're on, you're on a roll here. It's not about doing it all by myself. And it's also, you know, we're in our culture is such a fix it culture. So it, when our yeah. back goes out or, you know, like we said earlier, people who come to you, it's like, fix it. What did you do wrong? Right. There's this right, wrong, good, bad, instead of just being present to it. So being present to what is this? What's the message here? Oh, it's asking me to slow down. Maybe I just need to slow down and presence it. Or stop and allow mm. and, and allow what wants to happen. Just be with it. Feel like it's totally giving me the last part of feeling into it. And one of the processes I do when I have a client who has chronic pain, I'll have them breathe into it and say, you know, what does the pain, what, what is the pain asking of you? Mm-hmm. I always say where there's pain, there's a gift. And often pain happens because it's trying to help us be present to this gift so that we don't move forward without it. And as I'm lying still, and I'm just realizing like how abundant, not only abundant, but I have everything I need inside me and around me. And that there isn't, necessary that I have to do more or have more I'm already enough and to to trust the process I think there's a like I I, you know I want to shift blame on you know well maybe maybe I you know I did too much too much (laughs) maybe Mm -hmm. I did too much or maybe it was the massage I had from my friend who gave me a a beautiful massage that day or you know I you know you try to like externalize everything find all the reasons yeah instead of maybe it was a gift to mm. just relax and say no. Cause one of the things I had to do is I had to say no to going to lead um, a yoga class. And 
you know, the part of me that was in bed going, oh, they're really counting on me. I really need to show up. I'm like, you can't get out of bed. Like, they'll be okay. <laughs> they'll understand. And you're taking care of yourself. Like, it's okay to act like it's okay to get sick. It's okay to not feel great all the time. It's okay not to be happy all the time. So one of the things that I'm hearing is that the process that we have, that we that we do for the 12 days of creation for the great uplift, what it allows us is to actually start to build a resonance in our lives, to build the attraction factor mm -hmm. to being in conversation rather than in judgment with ourselves, with spirit, with all of the things that are going on. And, you know, because you presenced that day back in January, it's not a fortune telling machine, it's a conversation. Mm -hmm. So then you got to have a conversation going into October or going into September. Now we're about to go into November. So we'll be presencing mm -hmm. what, what did we write about? What did we notice? And what may that mean for us now that we're in 11 months later? Right. And I think about the, like the guidance that's there for us that's right Tremendous within amount. us like we we go to fortune tellers or we go like we look at our horoscope or we you know and and that's all beautiful guidance get, don't get me wrong and you have it you have a even better guide right inside of you and what we do with the 12 days and that that practice that that we do together and that that we'll be doing again this year it helps you to build that for yourself and that's what I'm yeah. really hearing is the beauty of that, of, of the, the witness of that in your own life. Absolutely. And, you know, when you, when you go to start something, no matter what it is, when you want to, you know, change a behavior or you want to start a new relationship or you want to, you want to create something, a dream or an ideal, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of life force to get something going. And then once something goes, it's like, great, it, it carries on, it, it starts to build its own momentum. And then, you know, it may or may not be yours to keep on going. It may, you need to hand it off to someone, or maybe it's complete. And it takes a lot of energy to change direction, it takes a lot of energy to stop it. And I look at this as, as that of like, this is now like from October to October, that was that full year cycle. And now I'm stepping into something that wanted to come. And here I am in my future self from when I first wrote this. And as I'm looking back at my notes that I wrote back, you know, a year ago, or like 11 months ago, you know, I actually gave back the engagement rings. I actually gave back, gave back, gave back, hmm. gave back, you know? Right. And I said, I found, had a, a feeling of profound gratitude for my life, my gifts, and the unfolding of the process. And so that that was the aha as I was, you know, still presencing the back this month, my own personal back pain. I was like, oh, there's a gift here. There's presence here. Mm -hmm. Presence. <laughs> presence, exactly, with a T. And how grateful I was and how just being able to acknowledge where I've come from in a year. And that maybe the back wasn't holding me back from, you know, my life, but it actually was just holding me to be able to get back the gifts that I would have kept. If I had kept going on, I would not have really received. So it's just really powerful. Yeah. Powerful, powerful. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that with us today. Um, for all of you that are interested, we, this year, I will be doing the 12 days of Christmas, which we're now calling the 12 days of creation, because it's really taking those 12 days between December 25th and the epiphany at Jan January 6th and presencing the next year and co-creating that with spirit, with your highest intention with life, right? And 
Well, we will be doing that. It'll be free, just like we've done in the past. And next year, we're going to do a small group circle, a co-creation circle with the women and men who would like to be a part of that. Whoever would like to be a part of that, it'll be um, for the entire year. There will be 10 calls with us. So it's only $240 for the year, which means 20 bucks a month investing in you. And as I said, if you're not interested in doing that, that's fine. We're still doing the 12 days of Christmas, the 12 days of creation um, as a free, as a freebie, as a give back. That's what we do. What we found for ourselves this year and prior years is going back through it and getting the gifts like we just did with Stephanie. We're going to be doing that every month with you guys live. So there's the accountability. There's the being present with other people who are on this journey with us who are intentional like we are and being able to up level with a group of people instead of like that whole what we're always taught of like oh you gotta do it on your own so all of those links will be down below we'd be love to answer any questions if you have any and most of you are aware of the fact that we have a podcast if you're not, you can find all of our information at the Soulful Leader podcast, or you can find us on LinkedIn and Facebook under Soulful Leaders. And that wraps up another episode of the Soulful Leader podcast with your hosts, Stephanie Allen and Marin Oslak. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to dive deeper, head over to our website at the soulful leader podcast.com. Until next time. Bye.